St. Macarius the Great was born in the year 300 AD in Plinipur, Egypt, to pious Christian parents. Macarius's parents were named Abraham and Sarah, similar to the Abraham and Sarah of the Old Testament, and they were unable to bear a child for many years. Until one night, in a dream, Abraham of the Old Testament showed himself to Macarius's father and told him, God desires to bless you with a joyful offspring in the same way he blessed me when I was in the foreign land of Canaan, giving me a son in my old age. And so Abraham and Sarah bore a son, who named him Makarios, which meant blessed. When Makarios was of age, his parents wanted him to get married, and so Makarios agreed despite this going against his own desire. On the night of their wedding, Makarios, not wanting to lose his purity, pretended to fall ill, and so God helped Makarios protect his virginity throughout his entire marriage. One day, Makarios was walking through the wilderness, collecting lye for his parents, and at one point he veered off the well-trodden path as he desired to rest. And in a dream, an angel showed himself to Makarios and said, Look, Makarios, at these deserted lands, for it is fitting for you to live in these lands. And Makarios, awakening from this dream, wondered what this meant. Upon returning home from this trip, Makarios found his wife to be ill, and soon after she fell asleep in the Lord, leaving him a widower. Later on, a girl in Makarios's village became pregnant out of wedlock, and not wanting to be shamed by her community, she accused Makarios of raping her. Upon hearing this, members of her family beat Makarios nearly to death. However, Makarios never denied the allegations, wishing to follow the example that Christ had set when he himself had been scourged. When the time came for the girl to give birth to the child, her labor was extremely painful, and she was unable to deliver. Only when she confessed that Makarios had not raped her was she able to have the child. Soon after this event, Makarios' parents fell asleep in the Lord, and he was left on his own. And so Makarios decided to follow the ascetical life, and he withdrew into the wilderness where he was tempted and tried by the devil in many ways. However, Makarios never gave in to these temptations, as his love for God and his commandments were far greater. Makarios throughout his life performed many miracles. One time, there was a heretical bishop who claimed that Christ only possessed a human-like body, and in fact was never the same as us humans, and therefore he never truly resurrected. And so, the canonical bishop, whom was in good standing with the church, called Makarios to save the souls of the people who had been tricked by this heretical teaching. Makarios came quickly and tried to prove to the heretical bishop that his teachings were false. However, the bishop would not accept his argument by any means. Makarios, seeing there was no other way, then knelt down in prayer for an hour. And when he got up, he went to the grave of a man who had been dead for many years, and he resurrected him out of his grave. This man then remained as a disciple to Makarios for three years, until he passed away to the Lord for a second time. By showing that a person, through God's power, can be resurrected, Makarios convinced the heretical bishop that it was possible for Christ to have resurrected from the dead and still have been fully human in addition to being fully divine. And thus many souls were saved from the heretical teachings that were brought on by the devil who desires the perdition of all people. One day, when St. Macarios was walking through the desert, he found a skull of a person lying on the ground, 
and touching the skull with his staff, the skull began speaking to Makadios, telling him that when he was alive he had been an idol worshipper. And the skull continued, And you, Makarios, possess the Holy Spirit, and if you pray for those who are being tormented, they will receive some relief from their suffering. And Makarios responded, What is this comfort, and what is your suffering? And the skull responded, As far as the sky is from the ground, so great are the flames that surround us, and it is impossible to even see through the fire the face of he who stands in front of you. And when you pray for someone, they are able to at least see the face of the person in front of them. This is the comfort they receive. And Makarios responded, Oh, woe is the day that the man was born, if this is his only comfort. And Makarios further asked, Is there any greater torment than this? And the skull said, we who did not know God at least are granted some mercy, but those who knew God and rejected him and did not do his will are placed below us. And Makarios took the skull and buried it in the ground. At one point in St. Makarios' life, he was banished to the island of Nile by the emperor of that time on account of disagreements regarding the Nicene Creed. On the island of Nile, the people living there were all pagans. One day, the pagan priest's daughter became ill. When St. Makarios came and prayed over the girl, she was immediately made well, and the entire island rejoiced and converted to the right faith. Once the emperor found out about this occurrence, he realized Makarios' holiness and immediately brought him out of exile. And when Makarios' time had come, his disciples gathered around him, and he lifted his hands and eyes towards the heavens and said, In your hands I place my spirit. St. Makarios the Great fell asleep in the Lord in the year 391 A.D. St. Makarios is celebrated by the Orthodox Church on the 19th of January.